Ava, you were saying to me there the word tear. How do you use the word tear? Most of the time it's used if a bunch of, say a bunch of young fellas, I suppose old enough to be drinking and stuff, are going partying. Somebody might say to them, you're going on a keen tear. Tear? Mm, you're on a keen tear or something like that. They'd be out partying. And how else would you use the word tear? In a tear. If you're in a tear, you're in a tangle. Like in your housework, for example. If you, you're, if, no matter what you're at, you can't get it done. You're kind of in a snarl or in a tangle or in a tear. They all mean the same thing. And you say over the way in another bay, they use the word re-raw. re yes. They, they meant the same thing as in a tangle. You're always in a re -raw. Always in a re -raw. Yeah, that's what it meant. Because I, I looked, uh, that's from Trinity Bay. We don't use that. But I looked it up in the Newfoundland Dictionary. And that's how they, they use it. They use it to mean that. And you, you, you'd use the word of Bresney as well? Bresney, yes. We used to gather Bresneys. And I remember gathering my share and believe me. My mother would gather them in her apron. We'd go and gather them in our arms and bring them home to light the fire. Gather them over on the beach. A Bresney sticks? A Bresney. They're, they're, they were a little, really dry. So they weren't heavy. Really dry stuff that came in from the sea, all dried out, and landed on the beach, and, and dried out on the beach. And you go on the beach and gather it up and bring it home. It's easy to light the fire with them. And tell me this as well. Uh, we, you were using the word um, kershines. Yes, we used to use kershines to, mostly the way we used them was to cross the pan. Like it, there was no, no, you could, to get from one side to the other without going into water and getting yourself all wet, you'd walk out and, and go take your crochines and you'd go on your crochines. A lot of the men here used to use crochines because they always had cattle and stuff on the other side of, of, the, of the pan over there. So people would cross over the water over here? Yes, with the crochines. And for anyone listening now, what is a crochine? It's like, it, well, some people would call them stilts. They were a wooden stick with a, another piece of wooden stick uh, nailed onto them where you put your foot. And that was up a bit from the bottom. And it wasn't up to the middle, but it was up uh, a little bit higher than the bottom so that you could rest your feet on the stilts. So and some people would call them stilts nowadays, I suppose. We used to call them kershines. Kershines, that's what we call them. And did the men use them at all? Or did the men use them? Yes, the men used them to go over uh, to check on sheep. I remember one fella <laughs> years ago, he's dead now, God rest his soul. But I remember him going on the kershines over to, because one of his sheep was out in the water. And he went over on the kershines to, to get his sheep out of the water. It was a big flood on, so it wasn't a good day to go on kershines. Yeah. <laughs> and when did you stop using the word kershines? Oh my God. I think some of the youngsters are bringing it back. Some of the smaller ones are bringing it back, but uh, I don't know do they call them kershines, but I see them on them sometimes. And tell me this as well, there was another word you had. Say if you were going on a visit to someone, you'd say. Going cruising. You'd be going on more than one visit though, if you were going cruising. Like if I left home and said, I'm going, uh, if my husband said, where are you going? And I said, I'm going cruising. He'd say, yeah, see you in a couple of hours because you, I might go see my sister Rita and then I might go down to see Margie and I might go see several people. That was cruising. Cruising. Yeah. My mother and father used to go cruising in the night time and go visit a couple of friends to head up the road. And did anyone ever say where that word came from? No. Just use it naturally, never never thought about it. Yeah. And other words you would use here, you'd use the word fernent. Oh yes, if someone would be in front of you, be fernent you. Or if someone was yeah, or getting directions for someone's house yes. would use it. Yes, you you could use it for directions too. And say, uh, you know, if you wanna know where my house was, I'd say, Well, you come up the road and 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 they'll tell you some of the direction the then saying that and there and it's right for nature now so as you're standing and you're looking right at it it's right for nature right in front of you and 
Would you use, I'm trying to think, you would use, you, you've probably heard words like gommel before, have you here? Gammel? Yeah. A fool. You're a gammel, you're a fool. <laughs> You'd say that? Mm -hmm. We'd use that for gom, we'd say gomma home. Yeah, yeah we'd no, use we, we, we say gammel. And you'd use another word, sleeveen. Yes, a sleeveen. Uh, wasn't, it wasn't nice to be called sleeveen. <laughs> <laughs> you were kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, couldn't be trusted kind of a fella. <laughs> yeah. A bit cute. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you ever hear of a term, you use the term cod, to cod someone? Oh yes, many times, I still use today. And she don't be codding me. I know you're codding me. Yeah. You'd, you'd, and someone would cod the eyes out of you? Yes, they would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'd use codding, like don't be codding me to a child. Don't I, be codding me, yeah. yeah. Yeah, And tell me this as well, would you use the word, say if you got a, I heard you use the word a scrub. Yes, a scrub, a scratch. If you had a scratch on your hand, like the cat would give you a scratch, to be a scrub. And if lads were fighting, they'd say they scrub the eyes of each other. Yes, they would. <laughs> would. And you'd use that every day, would you use that still? Yes, yes, I've often used the word scrub. Would you use the word scrub? Mm. And would you use it the same way as us to get a scrub off a cat? Yes, if a cat scrubbed you, but you could use it for other things too, like any anything. If if you had a big scratch or something on your hand, you'd say, scrub yourself. Scrub yourself. Yeah. I heard a man the other day said to me, he was buying a, a scratch card and he said that you'd scrub the, you know the way the scratch card, you'd, you'd yeah. scrape with a coin. Yeah. He said you'd scrub off the stuff off it. Yeah, no. You never heard that? Yeah, I never heard it that way. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And you used the word a rack here as well, do you? A rack. For your years ago they used to have a comb they call a comb a wreck right. to wreck your hair to you know but uh, we don't call that nowadays no. do you ever hear the old men years ago saying if they're getting their hair cut go for a crop a crop yeah yes yeah how would they say that again tell me to get your hair cut yeah they they, they need your hair cropped cropped yeah you get your hair cropped. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed as well that whenever I was outside in the yard here with someone and he pointed down and you say, you don't say rushes here, you say. Rishes. 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 Yeah. Instead of a rush. Yeah. A rish. Yeah. But now I don't know what you mean by rishes because I saw you pointing to a little purple flower. No, no, the they, other day that wasn't a rich. Was no, it? no, no, they were flowers. They're little, little tall things you make the same bridges cross out. You know, you, yes, I know. You, we sometimes uh, people used to make something else, and I'll have to ask about that now because there was some kind of a tall, leafy thing too that they used to make uh, uh, jiggers out of to jig fish. I'll ask about that now, and I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's another name on it, not riches. Did you pick mu mushrooms here as children? Was there mushrooms here? No, we never. No, there might have been here because when I was teaching in St. Bride's, one of the teachers over there used to pick mushrooms all the time, and he said to me, "You mean you never knew they were growing here?" Yeah. <laughs> but I, we never looked for them. Mushrooms wasn't something we ate years ago. Yeah, I'd see them at home. They'd get a a, a rush or a rish, as you would call it, and they, and they'd, they'd tread the mushrooms through them to call them a trace. Do you ever use the word a trace? No, no, no never use that. Yeah. But like you were saying to me the other day about pork, when you fry pork. Yeah. We used to call them rashers. You call them, oh yeah, same as at home. Slices of pork, yeah. You wouldn't call them pork or scrunchings, you'd call them rashers. Well, nowadays some people call them scrunchings. But we always call them rashers. <coughs> A rasher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you ever hear the old people call any particular names for potatoes? Did they call them taties? Taties, potatoes. Some people have said praties or taties. Nowadays they just say potatoes. What do the old people say? Praties, sometimes. A few praties, dig up my praties in the fall. Dig yeah. up the praties in the fall. Mm. Yeah. Did you ever hear them calling, pronouncing at home we'd say, sometimes for an onion you'd hear people say an ingin. No. D did you ever call them onions? Did you ever hear the old people call them onions? No. Onions, yeah, well, onions. that's what we call them today. Yeah. Not in choir like Same that. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's probably a string more words that Lots, yeah. Like in that poem last night they were they were talking about 
when the ice is in swatches. And we used to call them clampets. Out there in the pan, it froze, it froze, it freeze over in the winter. But after, like to be all froze over, and then after a while, I suppose some different kind of a wind to come, and the ice would break off into pieces. And and the uncles used to go out standing on them and sailing up and down the pan on them, which was kind of dangerous if you fell in. There was too much water in it. But we they they and in that poem I was talking about last night <coughs> in Trinity Bay, they called them swatches. We always called them clampets. 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 And they were the broken off pieces of ice to be yes, floating. Yes. Yeah. Clampets. They were big enough, like to to get on and kind of use to sail along the pan. The young fellas used to get a stick sometimes, push themselves along. Had yeah. a great day sailing back and forth on the clampets. Wouldn't be the safest thing in the world now. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't do the safest things in those days. And you were in a hurry, but you you no, called yeah. yeah you called children childer, here. Some you, of the older people used to say children, yeah. Children. Yeah. Did they say children? Yeah. Children, yeah. The older people used to say children. Children and oh, children or children. 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 And someone, so most of the time they call them young ones. Would you say youngsters? Young ones. Young ones. Young ones. Yeah. Mm. And you you don't pronounce your T H like. You you'd be like us, wouldn't you? With our, would you? Well, a lot of people don't pronounce their th. I do most of the time. I suppose where I was teaching for so long, try to get in my ing's and my th's. Mm -hmm. But some people don't. A lot of people don't. Uh, like even nowadays, a lot of people don't. I've even heard people here calling the sort like we. Some people say a thing. What, what's that thing? That thing there. What's that thing? Yeah. T-I-N-G, yeah. but, but, you know, a lot of people now say thing, yeah. especially if you're trying to be correct with yeah. youngsters around that you're teaching and stuff. Yeah. Did you ever hear the old people saying, you wouldn't say Catherine, you'd say Catherine. Catherine, yes. When you, when you weren't, like, my sisters often call me, uh, if you've been to Margie's house, you know how particular she is about her cleaning and everything else. Well... <laughs> they say I'm not as particular because, I suppose, Margie says she taught school all her life, so, so she's not as particular. But she says to me, you're not Catherine Bryn. <laughs> now, whoever Catherine Bryn was in the past, she must be an awfully clean woman. <laughs> and she never had a thing out of place. Well, I'm not Catherine Bryn. You're not Catherine Bryn. No. <laughs> you're going I better to... get up now and go to mass. <laughs> Good woman. I'll see you later on. Okay. I'll make a dart down probably tonight sometime. Yeah. Leo's right. going to try to put this, this, this stand Margie got together. And honest to God, I'd say there's about 500 pieces to it. If I had to notice so many pieces, I'd have sent it back. But that was the, she, she, the first one I got. She sent that back. She said it wasn't suitable. So Anyway, he's going to have that after dinner and I might give him a hand with it. And you're, you're going to dart to mass? Yes, I'm going. Oh yes, I'm going to dark dark I'm going to have, you got your, have, you got, have you got all your accoutrements? What? Have you got all your bits and pieces? Oh, I have, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> my envelope, my church envelope. I forgot it last Sunday, but I'll make sure I have it today. I'll see you later on. Anyway, we'll see you. Good luck.